Hi guys, how to make maximum profit late game. So right now I am very, very late game and I have almost every building and I'm gonna show you how I do it very fast. So right now you see the wages is uh, 1,616 and I give the wages nine for peasant, nine gold and warrior 11. Uh, I also give six gold for unemployed people. Before I go any further into this, see the 1,616 gold. You're gonna say that's a lot of that's a lot of money for salary. Yes, but the thing is that uh, this money is going all the way back into uh, the purchase of everything you see over here. So you need to make sure that you make a quota. You're over here. Over here, you see it says food for sale. I need to reach 167 sales per day for food. 167 sales per day for alcohol and so this is alcohol and this is food so in total combine all together you need to have a 167 and I have more than that because I have the mats and I'm gonna go more deeper into that later on right so right now how I calculate the number over here so you see I says it says 80 so over here if you look at the top it says I have 94 peasants I have 27 prisoners so if you calculate both of them together it comes down to 121 uh, people all together so 121 citizen now the reason I say 121 is because both together are going to eat rutabaga at least you need to have at least 121 rutabaga why because they're making a salary of nine gold per day meaning that they need to be able to purchase at least uh, rutabaga and at least moonshine which is six gold now I'm going to say, why do I give them so much money? Is because I want my peasant to also be allowed to buy flour or meat. So if, let's say, they choose not to buy rutabaga, which is fine, they're going to buy flour, and the flour, I'm going to make more money with that, you understand? So that it's going to cost them five gold, and if they choose to buy something else like moonshine, it's going to cost them three gold. So that's a total of eight gold, right? So they're going to have one gold left on them. So... The reason I do this is because I want them to accumulate gold every day so that they can purchase something else like they can purchase maybe uh, flavor ale in the future that's 15 gold so I want them once in the time for the peasant I want them to be able to buy at least meat or flour or flavor ale or beer you understand that's why I give them nine gold so all the money they make is still going back into the cell right so that's the reason why over here I have 130 that covers the, res the, uh, the peasant and the prisoners, right? So I am guaranteed to feed them. I am guaranteed to feed all these peasants. The only problem is the warriors. Now, the warriors is 70 of them. So basically, you're going to say, so why do I only sell 130 if I have 70 warriors? Well, that's because the warriors are making more gold. So I'm giving them 11 gold, meaning that this gold will allow them to buy the flour, ultimately, and it will allow them to buy beer, ultimately. So, or moonshine or flavor ale it's up to them because these warriors and peasant don't forget uh they play dice every day so some of them they can have more money than the other right which is why some of them will be very happy to buy meat or flour they'll be like oh i have tons of money i'll just buy this instead of this right it depends who has more money than who right but at least ultimately i want them to be able to buy flour and beer so five plus six eleven gold you understand and you don't want to go lower than that because if you go lower you're going to have a notice that says uh setting your price lower than the market uh, giving by the holy caravan may lead to the emergence of speculator and speculators will come over here and buy all your beer and they're going to resell it somewhere else you don't want that so you want to make sure you sell it to the minimum you understand the minimum is five the minimum is six you can go higher if you want to here i can go lower or higher but i'm going to leave it at 15 why because it's a luxury i decide to and if people want to spend more money in it it's uh, additional profit for me but the, not everybody's gonna buy meat and the reason why i put 30 is because i make a lot of meat as well uh per six days so the meat is different than the field this one is every six day the field harvesting is every three day you understand so that's another topic for later so basically anyway so i have 80 flour to confirm that 70 uh warriors will be able to buy flour now you're gonna say what if uh peasants buy flour instead of rutabaga that's an issue that's why i can go higher but the problem is that if i go 100 flour if i sell 100 flour it means if i go back to production i'm gonna ha i'm gonna be out of uh, flour because the reason is here in the production menu i choose 100 product productivity right which caused me in this situation it cost me uh, 81 rye because i already have 20 in the warehouse meaning that i'm going to spend 81 rye in order to produce uh 80 more uh flour that's gonna be a quota of a total of 100 right but if i go in the price and if i sell 100 of them right i won't have any more flour in the uh, the warehouse meaning that my lords will not have any flour to eat they will have meat you're gonna say yeah but they're gonna have meat i could do that but the thing is um 
Like, I want to keep some flour for the lords, like maybe the kids. I'm not sure if the kids can eat meat, to be honest with you. I think they eat uh, flour. That's the reason why if I put 100 over here, which is fine, I'll be making more money. Uh, then I need to go back over here in the productivity and I have to enhance this to maybe 110 or maybe 115, right? So that what it means is that if I sell all my flour from the peasant and the warrior then i'm still gonna have 15 left in the warehouse for the lords right and i don't think they're gonna eat 15 so you always need to put a little bit more than just enough because if they're out of food then you're in deep trouble but the thing is that some of these lords are going to eat meat as well so you don't really need 15 extra in the warehouse i just do 15 because I just want to right but you can like i said you can lower this down the thing and then you're gonna say what about the rutabaga so let's say if the peasant buy more flour than rutabaga what about the residue what about the excess the excess will go back in the warehouse meaning that you're gonna have more rutabaga for um the peasant and for the prisoners because prisoners there's 27 of them so ultimately you need to have 27 rutabaga for them no matter what so that's why the 130 rutabaga guarantees uh, all the peasant and guarantees all the prisoners to eat every day. And it's very important because the prisoners uh, are going to be productive if they're not starving. So they need to eat something. Now you're going to ask me, why don't I give them flour, meat, beer? I could give them anything else. But the thing is, I only give them rutabaga and moonshine. Moonshine is important as well. Moonshine, I put 140. Now you're going to say, why 140? Because, so as you can see, I have 94 peasant and 27 prisoners. So for 121 total, if I go back over here, my productivity is 140 moonshine uh, per day. You understand? And don't forget, the harvest is every three days. So you have to con con you have to understand that 140 times three, you have to calculate 140 times three. Do you have the maths? So if I, if I calculate, that would be uh, 420 and I'm like 413. So that's kind of an issue right now but i'm making a lot of rutabaga as you can see so you gotta make sure you have the fields and i'm gonna show you later how many fields i have right so when you make the moonshine over here and you go back over here so here is i'm selling uh 140 moonshine but i can go down to 130 so over here i need to have at least 121 you understand so i put 130 i can put 130 i can put it 121 so what it means that i, I guarantee that 94 peasants and 27 prisoner will have their um their moonshine you understand but the thing is that a lot of peasants are going to buy beer They're, they may not buy moonshine they might they may buy beer so the excess that i'm gonna have will go back in the warehouse which is a good thing you understand that's why you have to calculate all that also i also have flavor ale but i'm only selling 10 of them because i don't make a lot of ale as you can see so i may take this out as well i am still not sure because i want to keep the ale for the lord but let me see. Maybe I'm going to reduce it to five because I don't make a lot of L. Right? Actually, you know what? I'm going to reduce everything because I don't make a lot of L. And uh, the, L, the L are, you know, is very good for my lords. The lords are more important than the prisoner and then the peasant. You understand? That's why the L, if you don't produce enough, you want to kind of back down. Over here, I'm making 30 L per day. But that's because if I have the, the mats, and I think I have the mats actually... Yeah, okay, I do have the mats, and what is it, 10, 10, 10, yeah, okay, I have the mats, that's no problem. So basically, I'm going to go back here, I'm going to sell maybe, you know, 10 of them, because I want to make money, right? But it's no guarantee they're going to, this is only, this is a luxury, guys, it doesn't mean they're going to buy it, but if they do, then good. So basically, if I'm producing 30 over here, if I have the mats, then it means that I'm going to have 20 left in, uh, in the warehouse. And I'm going to say, why don't I sell more than I could do that, eventually, but the thing is that if I'm out of L, then, you know, I can, you know, like, uh, these guys that have nothing to drink. So that's why I got to make sure I either have the beer, the L, or the moonshine for them in the warehouse. It's very important. So you got to be careful how much you sell, you understand? And to who you sell it, of course. So yeah, so basically, as you can see, I'm, I have a lot of gold and because I'm not losing any money on the productivity. So as you can see here, people are buying, uh, you know, the thing, the thing that I produce, as you can see. Here, I see it. they're already buying. Look at my gold. My gold is going back up. As you can see, so they're buying, 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 buying. And there you go. They're getting drunk over here as well. I don't want Rutabaga for warriors. There we go. 
So 9,900, see, it's going up and up. So I don't lose money. Even if I pay them a salary, I don't lose the money. It, it all comes back into my bank. <laughs> well, I mean, to the village, uh, you know, like treasury, technically. And people are playing dice. People are playing dice against each other, so some of them may be richer than others, you know what I mean? A lot of people play dice. You see this guy? 78 gold, holy shit. This guy is rich, man. He can... <laughs> 10,000 gold, there you go. 10,000... <laughs> he keeps going up. Holy shit. That's, uh... Wow. That's, uh... That's insane. <laughs> see, I'm out of flour now. Now they're buying Rutabaga. They have no choice. Whoever, you know, whatever... Whoever is left to buy... Uh, what about over here? So, see, the thing is, I removed the peasant over here because I want to ensure that my warriors get the flower over here, you understand? Here is warriors and peasant. You can remove the warrior, too, if you want to, but then I would have to remove the flower. That's the, re the reason why I put flower, everything over here, meat and root of bag, is because I want everybody to have access to it, you understand? So, make sure you have uh, two market, one for the warrior only, one for the warrior and peasant. And same thing with a tavern. Uh, you want one for the warrior and peasant for everything over here, whoever can afford it. And another tavern over here, uh, warrior and peasant is one. Uh, this one I made an exception that I put everybody and everything at the same time. And the reason is because sometimes one of, like it could happen that one of them may get sick, like the, the trader who works at a tavern. It happened that one of them got sick and nobody could have access to drinks. Same thing over here. So maybe, you know what, maybe I'm going to have to do this unfortunately because if one of them gets six then i'm in deep trouble yeah i forgot about that so yeah if both this the trader gets sick then you're in, deep, in really 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 deep trouble that's why you have to pay attention uh every every time it's 6 p.m you have to pay attention and see if everybody's ready to you know get the the goodies in order to sell very very important to double check that otherwise people they don't buy and you don't make your gold back and everybody's unhappy and GG, that's pretty much it. So that's how you make your goal, guys. Right now, the goal is still going up, going crazy. The other way to make money is to get taxes, uh, income from uh, vassalage, as we call it, being vassal. So what should what happened is that, like when you reach endgame, you want to make sure that they become part of your vassal. So it means that they are under your control. But in order to ask them to be your vassal, they may accept or they may refuse. If they refuse, you have three days to attack them. And if you attack them, you need to have a good army. So if you don't have a strong army, you know, uh, and then if you ask, ask them to be your vassal, you're going to be in deep trouble. That's why you have to wait until endgame to have a good army. Army and I have a very good army. I think I have like 70 people, and I have like a lot of strong. You no, know, like they're very like. Uh, if you look over here, see I have level 16, 15, 14, 13. They're very strong combatant, right? Uh, the other thing I suggest you to do, very very important, is to have uh, training grounds like late game. I have two of them, so I have two different people who's actually training them. And uh, but you want to use someone who has high combat skill, like you know over here. Where is she? Yuna, she has combat 16, command 20, right? So you want to use somebody like that. And the reason why she's not being assigned is because she's actually going to fight someone. Where is she right now? Whoop. She's actually on her way to go fight someone. I forgot where. Anyway, so the point is that uh, when you make them your vassal, your neighbors, when they become your vassal, you get income. So that's one way to make money at the end game. Uh, also, bear in mind that when you ask them to be your vassal, they, there's a chance that they accept without having to fight you, meaning that it's... It's like kind of like 50-50. So if they accept, you don't have to fight them. They just accept. They will be angry at you. But you can still improve their relationship over here, right? While they are angry at you. But they will still have to give you money every now and then. Uh, because they are under, they are your vassal, you understand? Like this one over here, uh, demand vassalage. So somebody is going there to ask them to be vassal. They're most likely going to refuse. And I'm going to have to fight them. So I have to have a strong army. But what you're going to do, you're going to look at what is their army. They have five people in the army. Let me do a they have wow well, he only has <laughs> he only has five archer right now so i think it's gonna be a big win and if he doesn't accept he's kind of dumb but if he doesn't accept i'll just have to crush him and then he'll accept and then he'll be angry but i'm gonna get money in exchange and you gotta do the same thing to every other people um and that's pretty much it. Don't forget that if you attack, uh, if you ask someone who is under an alliances, like these guys, they are under an alliances. So if you ask them to be your vassal, they may have other neighbors that will come and protect them. So they may have this guy, they may have this guy, and I don't know who else. And you're going to have a bigger army, you know, to attack if they refuse. So 
you got to be ready for that. I think I have like 60 people run one time to attack and it was a close combat. So that's the reason why in game you want to have at least, uh, I would say 80, like 70, 60, 80, even more like 100 if you can. 100 is good. And even more. I mean, like I said, this is in game. Like you're at the end where you're actually against the emperor. You're going against the matriarch. So the matriarch is not happy whenever you do that. And you're losing a lot of uh, relationship with him, meaning that he can have an embargo on the, the merchant that comes to your you know the the guy who comes to your uh this guy over here the trader so he may decide to never come back again so you may never be able to buy any more items from him because you have a bad relationship with the matriarch because you're asking the other provinces to be under your control you understand so that's end game very important but at the beginning of the game uh you want to have a good relationship with the matriarch because you don't have an army so because you have no army you cannot invade anybody you understand which is why you need to have a good relationship with him and you know like increase your army slowly and buy items from this guy and armor weapons whatever you can and late game you'll be able to create your own army because you're gonna have your own mats you're gonna have your own furnace you're gonna have your own armor you're gonna have your own weapon these are very important but then you need a lot of mats you need like uh, what, what do i need i need uh, see i need a lot of coal you need a lot of woods to make coal you also need a lot of mining bars mining ore and you know a lot of things you need also what is this i guess steel you need to have steel but to have steel you need coal and you need mining ore so uh, everything it comes into consideration in order to actually build your own army and then invade the entire place and then win the game you understand so that's one way to make money the secondary uh, secondary way is to attack bandit camps so if you see bandit camps let me double check is there any over here like this guy over here see so this guy oh three oh yes yes i'm going to attack this guy because that's 300 gold loot and there have 12 bandits so i'll be able to crush them and out of those 12 some, many of them will become my prisoners and when they become my prisoners i can even make them a uh, part of my warriors so that i increase to increase my army you understand so that's why bandit camps is another way to make money um the other way and last way to make money and this is the more the most efficient way to make money is to make trade uh, as you can see over here for 14 paper i get 486 um gold per day per day guys so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see paper is hard to make this is really end game because uh if you can make paper over here i'm going to show you paper i have i'm producing 50 per day so you got to make sure you have uh tools but to make tools you need to have coals and mining bar and to have coal you need to you need to have a lot of wood so you need for you know you know what i mean so you need to have a lot of woods i have a lumber mill over here i have lumber mill over here you know i have lumber mill over here over here over here so you gotta calculate all that and if you have enough wood then then you can build those uh, those paper and if you have a lot of paper like i said you can make tons of money with trade agreements same thing with anybody else but this guy he wants medical salve but the thing is i don't produce enough medical salve because i don't have enough mats on herb because my province over here we don't have a lot of herbs so that's why i'm buying herbs from this guy over here so the same guy who's buying paper from me is um, he's also selling herbs uh, to me so i'm losing 74 gold but i'm making 486 gold so it's kind of like a give and take you know understand? but i need this otherwise i cannot have medical salve and i need medical salve for my warriors when they get hurt super mega important um same thing over here i'm selling l for 133 gold per day but i'm buying mining uh or eight mining bars for 17 gold uh per day so i'm winning and i'm losing but if you combine both if you combine both i'm winning more than i'm losing you understand and you do the same thing with all your vassal or anybody you are, you are in a good relationship so this guy if i want to uh, sell my moonshine because he's buying moonshine right so i need to go to trade and over here yeah i can't why because i have a bad relationship with him and i'm so see that's another problem you understand so if you don't have a good relationship you're in deep trouble this guy over here is also willing to buy paper now let me see can i sell paper to him no because i have minus 39 so if i go over here so it, it doesn't work i need to have plus 10 not minus is 39 so i have to find a way to improve my relationship with him so to improve relationship i can go hunting spend time envoy offer whatever uh a restaurant re relation you need to have diplomatic so i don't have anybody with a diplomatic trait sadly but if i do i would be able to do this and it would cost me nine silver and i would have a zero you know i would i would go from minus 39 to zero so i can actually restart my relationship with him and improve everything else right so that would be one way but i don't so i cannot sell any i cannot sell anything to him same thing with this guy minus 130 38 same thing with this guy minus seven oh maybe this guy tools hmm, maybe but i would need to improve relationship by doing something with them and then i'll be able to trade with them which would be a good thing so i'll think about that in the future 
and this guy over here minus 56 so i cannot sell any weaponry this guy he wants to buy flour but i have minus 58 so it doesn't work this guy is minus 62 so i cannot sell but i cannot even i don't i don't even have medical cells so i'm not gonna sell anything so the best way to make really good money guys listen to me carefully this is the way to make a lot of money at end game is to is to make contract agreements with them by selling end game product so if you can sell paper very good if you can sell axe extremely good if you can sell uh sword even better uh you know what i mean so moonshine even better but you need to find a way to be in good relationship with them and to be in good relationship you either need to do what i just said uh improve relationship with them or you can kill bandit camps in their province if there's any bandits uh the other thing is to help them if if they ask you for help you know if so for some reason they need help and you help them so that will improve your relationship as well there's many other ways to improve relationship but i'm not gonna delve into that i just want to tell you how to make money so that's how i make a lot of money i have almost twelve thousand gold and money st keeps going up and like i said over here the sales the the salary and the sales uh, this doesn't this does, shouldn't move as long as you have your quota whatever you pay to them goes all the way back in the cell so you don't lose anything all you're doing is improving and making money as you go and of course the last way to make money i forgot to mention is to trade if you have good relationship enough with the matriarch then you can sell stuff with a trader so if you go to the trader who's coming over here you can sell uh, anything that makes gold and one of the things i've noticed end game that makes gold are the books so if you go over here i have a lot of books that i duplicate because i have a lot of paper so if you have a lot of paper you can duplicate these books over here in uh purple which are epic technically and they are worth almost 300 gold each but not 300 specifically around 278 gold i think the last time i sold i think it was around 260 270 gold and this is one way to make a lot of money and game you need to do this rewrite click this and click somebody over here but you want someone with high intelligence uh because higher intelligence will write faster and if you write faster well then you can sell the book faster you know what i mean so right now if i look at the books all you see says one you need to see where it says two or three so i only have one one i have zero one uh, here I have two so oh so yeah I could sell this guy I did not know so over here I could sell this book for 278 gold if this guy comes in my village so that is fantastic I did not even know so there we go and I keep looking do I have any other books for sale no no oh yeah this guy alchemy labs i could sell this this is around 150 gold i think there you go and what else and that's it so but like i said you i have like an x amount of people with high intelligence so this guy eight intelligence this guy this girl eight intelligence adele 14 intelligence so this guy see if you have high intelligence like this guy you want to make sure that they rewrite a book like this like anything that is epic you want them to rewrite this book because they're going to write it faster so you'll be able to sell fast you know what i mean so that's how you make your goal guys that's how you improve and uh is there any other way to make money in here um no that's about it guys that's the only that's when you reach end game everything i just said that's how you make a gold and the more gold you make uh you know i guess the better it is in a sense so that you can you know buy more armor items from this guy or you can use your gold to bribe them or you can use your gold to enhance your relationship then gold is very good you know to make right so that's that and if you have any other question please let me know in the comments otherwise thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video cheers